Now, let's mess with the volume and pressure for systems that have gas molecules in them. All right. So one thing that will help us when we think about uh, equilibrium um, or the effect of equilibrium for gases is we've got to remember how volume and pressure were related for gases. Okay, so if you remember, this is Boyle's law. Good old Boyle. Okay, how are volume and pressure related? Are they directly proportional or inversely proportional? Inversely proportional. Good. So Boyle's law. So volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Increasing the pressure decreases the volume. Decreasing the pressure increases the volume. So if you plotted it, it would look something like this. Whoop. So for this one, you actually have to look at the equilibrium system and uh, actually look at the moles of gas to determine which way it's going to shift, okay? Because, the, well, basically that's what Le Chatelier's principles can tell us, okay? All right, so if we, I'll just say if the pressure is increased, what's going to happen to the volume? slash volume decreases. So if we increase the pressure or decrease the volume, the equilibrium system will shift in the direction with the least number of moles of gas. I would guess nothing. Nothing would happen. It's the first time I've ever been asked that. Good question. No, it's good. Putting me on the spot in front of everybody. That's okay. No, I don't think anything would happen. Yeah. The question was, what if there's an equal number of moles of gas? And I don't think the equilibrium would <coughs> shift. I'll double check on that. Actually, I'll probably forget about it. But no, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I will. I'll look at that. My my first guess would be that it it wouldn't affect it. the equilibrium system would ch wouldn't change. All right. So the other scenario is the pressure goes down slash volume goes up. The equilibrium system. will shift in the direction with the most number of moles of gas. I guess if, in all actuality, I think then there might be a slight advantage, although it'd be, it wouldn't be as big of a difference for mold. Uh, it would shift towards, so if we decrease the volume, it shifts to the, the moles of gas that, that are the smallest in terms of actual size. Like, no, like uh, if you had one mole of, say, chlorine, 
versus one mole of fluorine. Fluorine's a smaller molecule than chlorine, so I think that would be the tiebreaker. The smaller, whatever the molecules are in terms of size, yeah. Um, in a scenario where there's an equal number of moles, it would then become the least number of mass. That wouldn't be how you word it, but... Uh, just uh, smaller, yeah, mass, smaller yeah. not not mass. Be, well, it depends. Yeah, I guess so. So, Yeah, so I guess if there's... that, So if the masses are different between the gas, the gas molecules, then you're, you have a heterogeneous equilibrium because that mass has to go somewhere. So maybe it makes a solid. Is that what you're thinking? More but, like the but if they're all gas, say we have everything as gas, the mole, the mass has to be the same on both sides because law of conservation of mass. And so if it's all gas molecules, the mass is the same, so it would just be the smaller molecules in terms of air, actual size. So. Is the pressure now decreases, uh, why would the mass of the no, so, so this, the, the why this is, um, both of them. I'll explain both. Two for the price of one. Okay? So the reason why this is, is uh, go back to Le Chatelet's principle. What are we going to do? The equilibrium system is going to minimize the disturbance. Okay? So in the first scenario, if the volume got smaller, that's the disturbance. I have less room. So how can I minimize that? by shifting to the least number of moles of gas, so I take up less room. I want to take up less room if I have less room. Whereas if the volume increases, how do I minimize that disturbance? By getting bigger, to, by trying to take up more room. So I'm going to shift to the side with more moles of gas to try to minimize that disturbance. So that's the best I can you know, explain the why. It's just how do I minimize that disturbance? If I have less room, I'm going to take up less room, shift to the lower number of moles of gas. If I have more room, I'm going to get bigger. Try to get bigger. Okay. See, this is why we need a camera offside to look at me like he, <laughs> You know, if you're just watching the, you know, the, the laptop, you know, you're not getting the full, 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 I don't know, experience that is this lecture. All right, so let's look at this example, okay? <clears throat> making ammonia. So making ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. So it's in equilibrium with ammonia. All right. So what would happen if we increase the pressure? So we're increasing the pressure. What's going to happen to the volume? Decreases. Decreases. So which way am I going to shift? Towards two moles of ammonia or one plus three, four moles of the reactants? I'm going to shift to the least. I'm going to, yep, I'm going to, if I increase the, come on. If I increase the pressure, decrease the volume, I'm going to shift towards the fewer number of moles, so I'm going to shift right. For fewer moles. Fewer N, I'll just say N. So I'm running out of room. <coughs> and actually, I want to write all this over again because I want to use a new color. You can't use the same color. It's to be confusing. All right, so if I increase the pressure slash decrease the volume, I'm going to shift to the fewer number of moles. And so that's to the right for this system. It doesn't always have to be the right. If the fewer number of moles are on the left, I want to shift left. Okay. Then, of course, I could decrease the pressure. What would happen to the volume? Increase. So if the volume increases, which way am I going to shift? To the left towards the most number of moles. And so in this scenario, I'm going to shift to the left. 